When it comes to skins regardless of the game, there's always going to be hits and misses amongst players. Overwatch is no exception. While there's been a ton of released skins that have impressed gamers and gotten them hyped, there's still a collection of them that have been lackluster to say the least. So today we're counting down some of our picks for the top 10 Overwatch skins that should be illegal. Now keep in mind that we're using the term illegal quite liberally here. We're going to be talking about skins that aren't pretty to look at, skins that are overwhelmingly disliked, and ones that feel rather pointless. And of course, none of these are universally hated. This is all subjective. So if we mention your favorite skin on this list, don't take offense. But feel free to fight for it in those comments below. So with that in mind, let's get to it. And at number 10, Winston Safari. Now, to be fair, this skin does give Winston a pretty darn amazing mustache. But that's all it really has going for it. This legendary skin puts Winston in a safari outfit, and tosses some binoculars on his chest and gives him a blue pinstripe shirt. To some, it was really fun, but others felt that it didn't really provide much, overall being overshadowed by other legendary skins of Winston's, especially the Explorer one, which from a design perspective is superior despite being almost identical. And at number 9, Reinhardt's Festive. This epic skin was released as part of Winter Wonderland. And it kind of felt like it was just a gold Reinhardt skin with a singular festive bow added to it. Now, considering it's called festive, I guess that is a pretty accurate description. But for some, it felt like there was a massive lack of effort put into the skin. Luckily though, for its price, it wasn't too much of a letdown. But compared to some of the other skins that came out as part of Winter Wonderland, it just wasn't as good. And at number 8, Winston's Specimen 28. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with Winston's Specimen 28 skin, but that's also kind of why it's not really liked. It's unremarkable at best, and shares a lot of similarities to his default skin. It came out as part of Overwatch Retribution and pissed off some Winston mains, who had waited over a year for the release of it. Needless to say, some felt really let down, especially considering it's a legendary skin. Perhaps had it been an epic, it would have gotten a lot less hate. And at number 7, McCree's Sherlock. Sherlock Sherlock McCree is a legendary skin that came out for Overwatch's anniversary. While it's not necessarily an ugly skin, some players felt that it was rather pointless, and sort of off-brand for the character, considering the other McCree legendary skins that have been available, like the Blackwatch one, or the Halloween terror events Van Helsing. Even the skin's description feels a little off. I quote, My mind, he said, rebels at stagnation. Give me the most obtruse cryptogram or the most intricate analysis and I am in my own proper atmosphere. It just kind of felt a little off for the American gunslinger and bounty hunter. Don't you think? Up next, we've got another McCree skin, and at six, Vigilante. This one is purely subjective and a matter of personal taste. A legendary skin, Vigilante is often hated on simply because of its bright yellow color. For whatever reason, it's unsettled a population of players, offending their eyes with its Tweety Bird aesthetic. I mean, I get it. Personally, not offended by it, but I can empathize, friends. Vigilante's counterpart, Mystery Man, tends to be more popular aesthetically too, so you can see why players would opt out from getting Vigilante in comparison to it. And at number five, Lucio's Slapshot. Lucio arguably has some pretty questionable skins. While the Slapshot skin is technically connected to his lore, the execution just felt a little bulky and mundane. It's the kind of skin that gets overlooked by some of his more impressive skins, like Hippity Hawk. It also feels kind of odd that it lacks the flashier aesthetic that Lucio's other skins, including his default, maintain. You feel like a subdued version of the character. But hey, hockey fans, maybe this skin is right up your alley. Here's hoping. And at number four, Orisa's Megasoma. Aesthetically speaking, Megasoma is a legendary skin that just isn't as appealing as the rest of Orisa's skins, much like many of the other entries on this list. It's just kind of. Meh. And it has a bit of a dung beetle feel to it. That being said, it also doesn't feel like much of anything special. While some may feel that overall Orisa's legendary non event skins don't stand out all that much, Megasoma is by far the least interesting of the batch. And just like our last number, is often overlooked by those who use Orisa as their main. And at number three, Tracer's Ultraviolet. This Tracer legendary skin is another one that gets hate based on personal taste. A lot of people think it's just downright ugly. There's just something about that shock of white hair and the black and white striped leggings and all of the highlights of pops of purple scattered throughout that just has people being like, eh, no, not interested. Some players feel like it kind of ruined Tracer's character, replacing the cheeky Brit with an edgy punk that just doesn't bode well in terms of her beloved personality. Its counterpart, the punk legendary skin, also got some backlash too, but it's arguably less offensive to the eyes. And at number 2, May's Mary skin. Another Winter Wonderland skin on her list. May's Mary skin is well disliked. Sure, it's cute and festive and is totally a pun, but for a legendary though, yeah, not a good call blizzard, making it a legendary pissed off a whole lot of people, and even started a pretty big debate between those who were angry and others who were like, dude, who cares? That was primarily because there was a really significant backlash and 
some people just couldn't stand it. People felt it paled in comparison to the quality of other legendaries, and not the same amount of effort was put into it like the other Winter Wonderland skins. And finally, in at number one, Industrial Zarya. When it comes to Zarya, the devs have a bit of a difficult job. Many players feel that her default is pretty darn amazing, along with her default recolors. It's perhaps one of the reasons why many feel that her legendaries are subpar in comparison. A prime example of this is the Industrial Zara skin, or more commonly referred to as her gothic skin. For a non-event legendary, it's just really really basic, and doesn't really offer up a whole lot to players. While skins like Maze Mayri has courted a lot of debate amongst players, Industrial is one of those skins that most just blatantly dislike, and there isn't much of a fuss or debate over it. Her cyber goth skin, which is almost identical minus the recolor, also gets a lot of heat, but hey, at least it jumps out a bit more than the all black sulky industrial one. Alright, there we have it friends, which of these picks on our list do you disagree with? And which ones do you think should have made it into our top 3 instead? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more lists just like this one, along with news, highlights, updates, creepy pastas, and much, much more. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.